This is an interview with $112 million lottery winner Cynthia Stafford. Are you listening? So this is an interview with $112 million lottery winner Cynthia Stafford. My name is Timothy Schultz. If you're new to this channel, I actually also am a lottery winner. Way back in the day in 1999, I won the Powerball before going back to college to study journalism and broadcast news. I'm now combining my experience with these things to launch this podcast and interview other fascinating people. Now this includes some other lottery winners, and this happens to be one of those interviews. Now, in 2007, Cynthia Stafford won $112 million from Mega Millions. It's incredible. It's life-changing. But what is even more incredible is that she actually really strongly believes in manifestation, in the power of visualization. She believes that she manifested this win. She even wrote down this exact amount before it happened. It's really, really interesting. So we got to discuss that as well as her new book. I got to ask her advice for other people that hope to win the lottery and what she would tell herself if she had it all over to do again. Now you're going to want to listen to the end of the interview where I even got to ask her thoughts on money and happiness. And her answers were very, very fascinating, along with her charitable work with Celebrity Elites. It's a fascinating interview. Without further ado, let's get to it now. Here is my podcast interview with $112 million Mega Millions winner, Cynthia Stafford. So I'm here with Cynthia Stafford, who won $112 million from Mega Millions in California in 2007. Cynthia, how are you today? I'm doing quite well. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you are busy, so I really, really appreciate it. So many questions here that I have, and also fans have written in with quite a few questions. But first of all, this was 2007. You won $112 million. So what happened? <laughs> well, for me, I'm going to say it was something that I planned for. I literally... Just one day decided, you know what, instead of just playing the lottery haphazardly, I'm going to choose an amount. And that was in 2004. So prior to that, I would play occasionally. It wasn't like a religious type thing or just something that I did on the regular. I just, when when I felt like playing. But 2004, I decided, you know what, I'm going to choose a jackpot amount and I'm going to manifest it. I told just a few people, like, this is what I plan to do. And yes, I did get the response of, well, that'll never happen type thing, but it did. And it happened in May of 2007. It was uh, truly, truly a blessing. And to see it happen after speaking it into existence, essentially, is what I did. I said to myself and to a few others that that this is what I plan to do. And with that intention, I made it happen. So back up a second. How did you... Well, let's just start there. So how did this okay, happen well, exactly? I'm an avid reader, especially of books dealing with the mind or subconscious mind. So I also took various courses, personal development courses. And from those courses, I'm going to say that jump started me into the possibility of believing even more. And I grew up having faith pretty much because of my uh, religious background, but It wasn't until I started really investigating the power of the mind. The book that really stood out for me was The Power of the Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. I've also read uh, a few other authors, a number of them, Napoleon Hill, Rich Dad Ford, had a number of books. But what really stood out to me from The Power of the Subconscious Mind was it was written in such a way where you can understand it. Plus, he used scriptures, affirmations, meditations in order to train the mind. And so I actually did the work by following what I read. And with doing that, being that I had a background where I was into meditating anyway and praying and doing my IMs, I just utilized that and just kept the faith. And it happened. And it's something to me that it can happen for anyone. It's the same as when you have It's shaking your head now. No, no, no. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying it's, it's incredible. <laughs> my belief is that it can happen because... Essentially, our thoughts are, we're thinking all the time. And whatever it is that we think about, good and bad, will find this way to manifest in our life. So 
I lately have been been doing a lot of more research into that and being very mindful of the words I speak and also being forgiving of myself and others when it when the speech or the words needs a little bit of correcting in order to be in alignment. Because to me, it takes work. It's like an athlete training to be the best at whatever it is that they're doing, or uh, even an actor or a CEO of a corporation. You cannot get there without without doing the work. So that's what this is about, doing the work in order to manifest whether it's whatever it is. Everything we, we have in our life is part of what we say that we are, that we, we intend to have in our life. It comes about from our thoughts. You are quoted as saying, thoughts become things. Yes. There's a website called Thoughts Become Things, and uh, the gentleman there, I forgot his name, but he... It's called Tut Notes. And I remembered even signing up for that in 2004. And he offers some great advice. And every day he sends a note to inspire, to motivate. And also when you sign up, he asks you to list some of your goals and what you wish to achieve. So, you know, I made made it my point to make this like a job in a sense. By feeding my mind constantly on positive things, reading the size of like the Bible, books from various authors that spoke on the subject of how powerful our subconscious mind works. So, yeah, that's that's really fascinating. And I have so many questions about this. Before we dive into that, when you initially found out that you won, what did that feel like to have this visualization, this thought, this belief that it was going to happen and then it happened. And, and also in addition to that, I mean, you visualized this exact amount. Did you 112? So, so where did, where did that come from? And, you know, I read that you wrote that down and why that specific amount and what did that actually feel like when you played that specific amount and it came up and your belief became reality? What did that feel like and, and why that specific amount? I chose that amount because it's close to my birthday. <laughs> that was the only reason. And uh, I think I've said it, stated before, had I known that the lottery would go to the billion dollar mark, I would have said, what point? <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, one told just seemed like this will be a good goal to achieve. And so that was the reason why I wrote 112. The other thing about visualization it is so important. That's why my book that I'm writing is called C and the mm-hmm. using the fire visualization to manifest in life. I made it a point to also make a vision board. I made it a point to do, like I said, the work. The work consists of taking the time daily to essentially take a few moments of my time and visualize myself at not just winning it, but also imagining how it would feel at that time too. Because that's really important, how you feel about something. It'll either show up negatively if you're feeling negative about it or positive. So I made sure I was feeling positive. I was doing, I would make up songs. I would just get into the vibration of just being a winner and feeling like I was a winner. So that was one aspect of it. Writing it down, I realized that when you write down your goals, it gives it that much more power. Mm. And so I made it a point to write it. And that was about a year after it wasn't, I didn't write it down when I first decided it was going to be 112. I will probably like, I want to say going into a year of my doing my affirmations and meditations. And so within six months to a year, let's put it like that. I decided, let me write it on the sheet of paper. And I did. And after a while, I just did not think about it often. I mean, I remember even at one point before 2007, seeing the amount reach 112 million. I didn't win it because, yeah, I did go buy a ticket. I didn't win it. And I just said, okay, not now, but it will happen. And so wow. I put myself into this state of belief. I kept the faith and it happened. It happened at the time it was supposed to. It was at a time that I really, truly needed it. That's really incredible. So you said that you did vision boards and you visualized this happening before it happened and you really wanted to fully feel what it felt like. So when it actually did happen, 
was the reality of it happening the same as what you envisioned? Oh, yeah. yeah. I imagined myself holding the check. I imagined myself wearing the shirt I was wearing, the way that I looked. I basically put myself into my vision. I imagined myself of what it would feel like. I imagined myself being the winner. And when you have that kind of faith, like what the Bible says in Matthew, I believe, 7, 12, that that's the kind of faith that moves mountains. Like you can pretty much do anything when you have that kind of faith. And so that's what I did. I just kept the faith that, you know what, it's, this jackpot will show up. And I did not deviate from that thought. I did not think that it would be anything different from what I saw in my vision because I created that vision. And what I say to people who ask me, like, how do you do that? I said, well, it's the same as when you're looking at a TV screen, a computer screen, your phone. It's a form of visioning. It's a, a medium, in a sense. So I said, you have to basically imagine yourself in there, just like when you take your selfies and things, you're in there. So I created that same type of scenario or mental movie by putting myself in there and imagining myself in the future that it happening. The more I did it, the more it became real to me. Now, I took a moment and I realized that, you know, 2004 was when I announced it to myself, to your family, but it happened in 2007. So I was doing the work until it manifested. Mm. But for me, and I think anybody that, whether they're working on their health, wealth, whatever goal it is, you have to work on yourself. And that's what I did. I worked on my mind to work on myself to believe that it will happen. And it did. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you gained custody of some children yeah. shortly before that happened. And, and your brother was in an accident. Is that correct? Yeah. He was uh, hit by an underage driver in 1999. I forgot what month it was. But the kids ended up in foster care right before that had happened. And his wife, I guess, couldn't handle the kids. So I went about the task of rallying to get them and it took me a few years to get all of them but i did and uh it, it was by no means an easy task but i did it and then i was able to have my father help me to support me with uh raising them i had actually had an incident with a social worker in 2007 where i ended up losing the kids to the system i uh did not give up i just realized you know what I just have to do whatever it is I need to do. And at that time, I realized I needed a lawyer to represent me because I, I was being accused of things that I did not do. So when the lawyer told me the fee, I thought, okay, that's kind of pricey, but I will make it happen. Lo and behold, I have thought, of, you know, my dad, he's an automobile wholesaler. Mm. So, you know, it wouldn't have been nothing to really just sell a car or two and get the funding that I needed. At the time, they had told me 40000 and I thought, okay, that's pricey, but I'll find it. And within meeting with that attorney, within about two to three weeks, the lottery bounced up. And actually, I'm going to say two weeks. I saw it, and I said, that's going to be mine. That has to be mine. And it happened. And I did gain full custody of the children at that point, or at least a few of them. <laughs> wow. I read anyway, correct me if I'm wrong, that you split the prize with your brother and your father. And one of I read a quote that stated that it was because they, at least your father, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, helped raise the kids. Yeah. It was a family. You know, like like they say it takes a a village. <laughs> so, you know, they were part of the process. And I had uh, always intended to split it. And, you know, it, it happened. It happened the way how I saw it to a large degree. And it's definitely changed me. Not just that. I mean, I've had other experiences prior to that where I used my mind to heal myself. And I had no fact that our minds are very powerful tools. I don't know if you're comfortable talking <laughs> about this, but you had a recent visit. I don't know if it's recent, but something with a tumor at a hospital that you used I yeah. used visualization for that. Yeah. I had to have surgery in uh, September, well, what's it, August 2018. 
um, there was a cyst that was on my brain and they weren't sure if it was cancerous, but I knew about it a few years prior. And I thought, well, you know, I'll just use my mind to shrink it. I was having a challenge, you know, you know, I was dealing with the kids who have become young, young adults <laughs> and wanting to be grown. <laughs> but during the course of that, I was doing a lot of work in the media with my company and everything. And I wasn't really focused on the way that I wanted to be on me. So the tumor grew and I got in a car accident. And from that, I recognized, okay, just got to trust everything will work out. It didn't. <laughs> I had to get, I had to have the surgery. And what I mean by it didn't work out. The tumor grew, even though I did my meditations and affirmations, I was not consistent. I know I wasn't. And so I went through the surgery. I was only in the hospital for, I want to say, about a week. Then after the surgery, I was released after a few days because I was consistently doing the work. I was consistently saying, I'm healed. I feel great. And it was remarkable because the doctors were like, you actually can go home. And that was the next day. And I'm like, uh, I don't think so. They said, you, you know, your vitals are great. You, you know, like you came through with no problem. They said, you know, we removed it and it was non-cancerous. You know, I, I know that's a blessing because this is something that I've heard that people have gone through and all kind of weird things happen, but I never went through it thinking, a worry. I, I just kept the faith, like, it's going to be all right. And it was. That's, that's wonderful. I'm so glad that you're healthy and that, that you're recovering. I want to jump back to the lottery real quick because people are curious prior to winning the lottery, were there other things prior to the lottery or even after that you have used visualization for that oh, yeah. to come? Like, can you give a couple examples of those? Well, the house that I owned at the time, I remembered using my walls and I had cardboard uh, also where I would put pictures of things that I wanted to obtain. And some of those things, uh, I'm going to say all of them happened, the, the, the house <laughs> now I'm having to remember it was a while ago. My company, I had wrote down that I was going to own a media company, a film production company, and it happened. I saw myself also, or visualized myself traveling and doing charitable works, philanthropy, philanthropic work, and that became a reality. I saw myself interviewing that became a reality as it is right now. <laughs> so a number of things that, and I'm just going to say, whatever it is that we focus on, positive or negative, I say it to people, you know, strive to be positive about it. And if you can't, focus your mind on something else. But these things will come through and it will find its way to manifest in our life. So there's been a number of things, you know, health. I, I had other health challenges and I just did my meditative work. And I just did my I am's and told myself, what I am, that I am healthy. I'm positive. Uh, I said a number of items at that time, but basically whatever it is I needed to focus on, I made sure I did my I am's because it's really important what we believe about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And do you think that, you know, when you visualize something and you see the I am's, I am this, I am that, when this comes to fruition, you know, when you won the lottery, when it becomes reality, does that come from up here or is it, does it come from a connection to being a part of something greater? Does that make sense? Some people refer to yeah. the mind as just your brain and some people refer to the mind as this larger connection of something we're connected to God, for instance, and that sort of thing. So wh what are your thoughts on that? Well, I know God's not into gambling, <laughs> and they do consider the lottery a gam gambling, but I do know that he is about answering prayers. And yes, in terms of it being part of a larger system, is what I like to call it. It is, because whatever we feed into our mind, I do believe uh, some people like to say God or the universe or whatever. I say God, you know, I'm, I'm going to get credit where credit's due. And yes, whatever we speak, there is a, a God out there. There are angels out there. They, are, they hear us. We may not see them, 
you know, depends on who you are. We may not stay, but they do have a way of hearing and making things come to pass in our life. They help assist in that. Now, for those who want to believe that, you know, we, we are, and, we, and is that's all that there is, they, are, um, they need to do a little bit more research into that because uh, even science have, especially lately, have discovered a number of things that are relatable to what the Bible says. Like the Bible is a very scientific book. It's not just a religious book. It's scientific too. And creation and everything. So yeah, I believe that uh, when I speak these things into existence, that there is another aspect to myself. And uh, some people also called it the superconscious mind or the God mind. Because we have what's considered superconscious, subconscious, and conscious mind. Conscious mind is something that we use as we're communicating and talking. But our subconscious is something that is working in the background 24 hours a day. It's always working. So the superconscious helps assist all the other two, the conscious and subconscious. Superconscious, I could say, is the a God consciousness. Subconscious is our consciousness, but on a more spiritual level. And so the more that you... And this comes from me doing my research, obviously, in my reading and and seeing it uh, active in my life also. So yeah, it all it all ties in. All of this is is very, very fascinating. I've, I've had my own personal experiences and I've met quite a few lottery winners and and other people that have had experiences about things before they've before they've happened. It's very, very fascinating. So I'm obviously very interested in this stuff, but for anyone watching that's, that's skeptical, that <laughs> is just like, oh, you know, how is this real? You know, I'm, it's because they haven't <laughs> experienced something like that, or, you know, they just don't believe in that sort of thing. What do you say to people that are skeptical about this type of thing? Well, it's all about faith. And as I say to people, faith is, is something that you act upon. It's not like something you can necessarily see because it's, a spirit. It is a spirit. So if you have faith, you're working with that particular spirit. And that's the spirit of belief. I also say, you know, you can't see the air you breathe, but you're breathing. So stop being a doubter. Like stop doubting in life. Because the more you doubt, you're putting up these walls and blocks to manifest whatever it is that you're seeking to manifest. So People typically get what I mean because I, the way I teach and talk to people, I use, I like to be like Jesus, like be simple with it. <laughs> like don't make it difficult because you don't have to. And this right here is something that is, it's simple. It is it's simple and yet a number of people tend to make it difficult. And depending on the person's background, if they were the type of person that's negative, it's going to take them a little bit longer to, for the mind to be programmed in a sense, because that's what we do to ourselves. We program our minds. And so what I suggest is, you know, look at something that'll lighten up your soul, like watch some comedy or listen to some music or something so that you could be into a more positive space towards manifesting what you want. I always say, be mindful of your words because your words will become your reality. Be mindful of those things. So for those people who doubt the, the other thing I also say is, well, look at your life. Your life is the way that it is because you believe it. This is something I'm going to mention. Um, when I was younger, because I was raised to a witness, and I remember as a child, we did a lot of study on um, what happened in World War II and how a number of the Jews and Jehovah's Witnesses in Germany had gone through ex some extreme experiences. And what I can remember as a child was... Those people who kept the faith, regardless, like they were people who were wealthy and they lost their role. But the ones who complained, I'm going to say those ones who got off earlier or, you know, their, their demise came basically because of that fear. But the ones who pretty much made it through were the ones who kept the faith and they strived to be positive. And, I will, and also there was a movie that came out. And it was about a, a, a man who was in the concentration camps. And um, I wish I could remember the name of the movie, but he stayed positive the whole time and he made it through. So it's experiences like that, that really have stayed with me and helped me to not doubt. 
and to recognize regardless of the circumstance, whether you're starting out with zero, you're coming from being incarcerated or health issues, is what we tell ourselves, is what we say that will manifest in our life. So it can be the difference between life and disbelief. Like you have the life and you live living positively, or you have a life and you live living negatively. And I would prefer the positive aspect. Yeah, how how you look at the world seems to really, really matter. I mean, that's your yes. your reality. Absolutely. I had a couple fans that asked, "Have you did you have any experiences in addition to visualizing this?" amount and, and mm-hmm. playing the day that this happened, did you have any experiences, any synchronicities or anything that happened that particular day that were sort of out of the ordinary? <laughs> I'm pretty intuitive. I can say that I'd like to say that I am. I mean, we all are born with intuition, but that particular day, I just felt a calmness and I kept saying that I know that I won. And I remembered asking my father to hold the ticket for us. And he literally had forgot and left it inside. We went to go visit the kids because remember I mentioned earlier that they were removed from me. So as we were out visiting with them, we both drove separate cars because I had something to do. And so we were at a restaurant and I think we had just ordered. And I had mentioned to my father across the table, you know, they said that, you know, there was a winning ticket and in California, and I told him I believe it was Hawthorne or something like that. He's like, really? I said, yeah. He said, oh, okay. <laughs> so what was kind of funny was he was heading, we were waiting for him. He said he was going to go to the restroom. We're waiting, and it was like 20 minutes. I was like, okay, well, let's go, go check on Dad. You know, he's taking too long. He was heading back to L.A. because he said that he left it inside a car, <laughs> and he had forgot to lock the car. So. <laughs> oh, no. I, yeah, so that was a little funny, but also I just, I felt at that time, like in my soul, like deeply in my soul, like, yeah, this is, this has to be it. And it came at the right time. I was able to, you know, hire a great attorney, get the kids back and put things into motion that I had set out to do. And I believe that life every day, every day is a new chance to, to make something happen. So that to me was was an interesting synchronicity. Also, just a number of things. I think when it comes to our life, the moment that we are okay and trust, you have you have to have faith, which is trust, that everything will work out, regardless of how that everything will work out. Don't worry about how trust is gonna work out. So that you have to take that how out sometimes. And for me, Winning that just was a testimony that, you know what, what I needed at the time was what I was asking God for was funds in order to help with the kids. And I realized it's, it, it didn't even have to come through the lottery. It could come through another source. It's about having that faith that whatever it is that we ask or that I ask for, trust that it'll come through. So I have more questions about visualization of this, but a lot of people are curious, you know, how would you say that the lottery win has changed your life? I mean, obviously it helped you get the custody of, of the children and it was a huge, huge blessing in so many ways, I'm sure. But how has it changed your life, would you say? Well, obviously it increased my faith that what we speak really has an impact on our life. What we say, what we speak impacts our life tremendously. And I've also recognized that, you know, as I have matured and, and seen a lot in life in terms of, you know, I've been on a number of different places, I've met a number of different people or whether they've met me. <laughs> I've come to recognize that it doesn't matter whether we want to manifest better health, whatever it is, that we have the power to our belief. And if we can believe it, we could just believe, like the Bible said, we have the faith the size of a mustard grain. That's what Jesus has said, I believe, to Peter. If you can have the faith the size of a mustard grain. A mustard grain is so small. <laughs> oh. I remember once my parents teaching us, and uh, my mom had bought some um, mustard seeds. She said, you see that? If you have that kind of faith, and I'm like, 
you can barely see it. Yeah. You can have that kind of faith. You, you can move mountains. You can do anything. So it requires feeding yourself positively, like your mind, just well, it, believing it, believing it, believing it. You just got to have to believe in groundness in life. You have to believe. What advice do you have to anyone else that wins well, over $100 million in, in the lottery? <laughs> what advice do you have for them? Okay, well, I'm, my advice to anyone, whether it's 100 or a million, any type of large sum of money, is to be clear about what you and what your intention is about the money before you receive it. Because the more clear that you are and when it does come, you are able to hit the ground running with putting things into motion. Like I hit the ground running with having financial advisors. I had did my research into that before it happened. So setting yourself up financially, interview people, make sure that they are someone that you feel you can trust. And our intuition will usually tell us that's the person to work with or not. Invest. Like, you can take it and buy a number of material things, yet I would say create a legacy. Invest your money into, I'm not a financial advisor. I would suggest, you know, finding one that has a good reputation. But for me, investing in charitable works, invest in something that's going to pay you back because charitable works is your payback is typically spiritual. Like you feel good when you give. Better to give as this to receive it, you know. So, and then in terms of financially, investing in properties, investing in solid stocks, and unless you have a background in investing, you know, find someone that'll help you with that. So invest in bitcoins, whatever it is that's going to take that what you were receiving, and continually put it into a vehicle or uh, an, an asset that'll grow it. Don't just take in, I'm going to go run and go buy, a, <laughs> I'm going to go buy a Bugatti. I'm going to go buy a Rolls Royce. I'm going to, I'm going to get this multi-million dollar house, which is nothing wrong with all that, but make sure that you have it where it can continually grow and generate uh, uh, income instead of just putting it into things where you end up paying taxes on it and then having to, you know, do a, a number of other things. Yeah, that seems that seems very, very wise. And a financial advisor seems seems like a really good idea because most people don't yes. understand what to do with. Most people don't. Most people don't take the time to uh, to research money and and what money is supposed to do for you. Money is supposed to work for you. And many still they acquire large sums of money, but they still have that work for money as, uh, aspect instead of allowing money to work for them. And when you can do that, when you can say, this money is going to work for me, synchronicity will happen. That which you wish to have happen in terms of growing your money will show up. That's part of life. that aspect of what I mentioned about don't ask how, just trust. Like you could say, I'm going to invest in the stock market. And I'm going to invest in some income producing properties. I'm going to invest in, as you notice, I'm saying this in a sense of like, I am, I am, I am. When you say that, it has to find its way back to manifest in your life. For myself, being a lottery winner, one thing that I have dealt with a little bit over the years are, you know, I've been in the media a number of times and most of it's been positive, but sometimes there's such a desire, I think, out there for for people to see lottery winners, you know, people that go from rags to riches and then back down, not necessarily to rags, but there's such a desire out there, the fodder, the gossip. It's like you're under a microscope of what, oh, yeah. how you live and what you do with the money. And so, you know, I found that to be true sometimes. You know, there's been a couple media reports. I'm like, that is not true what you're saying about me, but... You're out there making tons of money because you're sitting there taking, sort of taking advantage of lottery winners in a way. But what's mm -hmm. your opinion on that type of thing? I don't pay attention to them. Okay. I've always grown up with the uh, thought that if you don't have something positive to say to me or about me, then you don't have anything that I want to listen to. <laughs> we have a choice, which is fortunate. We have a choice as to what we feed our mind on or what we allow our ears 
to be inputted into our ears and thus, you know, our minds. I don't pay attention to that because I've had a number of things being said about me, um, about my financial situation and things that nobody really truly knows but me and those around me. But yeah, p- people will say things. And, and and I know that there's a tendency of a number of humans to want to denigrate or put down somebody because they wish they had what you have. And these particular type of people, these negative people, I just look at them and I just shake my head. As I say to myself, you can't be truly happy. You're not a happy person. You may be smiling, but you're not happy if you have to put someone else down, especially someone who's decided to manifest this. It's the same as a person that's a entertainer. And not a, you know, lot, there are a number of people who talk about these entertainers. They talk about these athletes. There's not, you know, there's, there's just those type of people out there. But, you know, my belief is that one day you won't exist. <laughs> you, you will be replaced by a robot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a positive way to look at it. Well, I mean, depending upon who, you know, which end of it you're on. But <laughs> yeah. Cynthia Stafford now could speak to Cynthia Stafford before you won shortly in 2007. What would you say? You should have went for more money. (laughs) (laughs) I would say those times where my intuition was telling me to pay attention and I went against it, trust my intuition. I've learned to do that more so, especially after the operation. And I realized prior to that, I was going through a number of things on a, a physical, spiritual type level. I was going through a true journey. And I recognized that all of it, was to bring me to who I am and where I am today. And I'm happy. And that's the most important thing. You can't buy happiness. And I've been happy. I was happy before then. And even through life, I'm going to say, because life is, is what it is. Like, you know, you have good days and bad days, but I'm learning to say more so as I wake up, today is a good day. And what we start out our days with or what we say, typically end up being what you believe. So that's another thing. I don't know if I mentioned that, that when I was doing my visualization and meditation, I know that our subconscious mind, um, and someone else agreed with me. I I was speaking last week at an event Mm. on visualization. He wanted to, you know, um, I was saying Cordell Jeffers. Yeah. Mm. He um, said to um, kind of speak on that, how, the subconscious mind is more apt to be, I, I used the word program because I believe our minds, our brains are like computers. It's, it's basically a computer. So whatever we put into it, it doesn't have a filter. The subconscious mind will take whatever we say as real. So as we're waking up, that's the time where we're most lucid and as we're going to sleep, meaning our minds are not as active. So we can use those times to do our I am's, to do our visualization, because the mind is more susceptible to listening and acting upon that. For instance, if I was to go to bed saying, oh, I don't feel good, and I'm in that state of mind, I'm going to wake up feeling that same way. But if I go to bed, even if I'm not feeling my best, I say I'm feeling good (laughs) or I'm, I'm going to, but I like to just put it into the affirmative of now. I am feeling good. And it, it, it does, it becomes so. So it's important to do the work when it comes to the mind. The, the mind is a powerful tool. And my book, C, is going to discuss that about how we can see these things, how by taking the time to write down our goals, taking the time to write down whatever it is that you say, because that gives you like more than 50% chance of, of, of creating that reality than by not writing down your goals. Yeah, you could put it into your phone or tablet, but to me, the power of the pen or pencil, that's ancient. You put that energy into it. You put your energy into that on a piece of paper that helps you. And uh, definitely visualizing. Even a person who can't see can still visualize. They visualize differently, but they can visualize. For a person who can see, like, take... Like you're blind. I'm not saying the person who's blind is not blessed, but you have sight. You could pick up a magazine. 
and, and start creating. You can cut out pictures. You can go to the internet, pick pictures of things that you want for your reality. And the mind will program it. Every time you're seeing it, it's programming it. Every time you say, okay, that's us. We're going to the Caribbean. Programming, programming, programming. Important. So I wanted to mention another gentleman who, and I think that was the Twitter space that you saw me on with uh, Mr. Speaking to Existence. So I want to, yeah, so Mr. Speaking to Existence on Instagram and Twitter. He also had suggested that I reach out to you and a, another person that I'm pretty close to that has followed up with you. His name is Michael. Mm-hmm. And um, he reached out to you and told you about me. <laughs> I think a few years ago, and he kept saying, you should. I said, well, when I, when I feel like in a place to be able to go out and what I mean by go out, like to be uh, in interviews and things, I'll know when it's the right time. But yeah, Mr. Speaking to Existence, he mentioned it recently like that. Did you contact him? I was like, oh, yeah, let me. I'm feeling better now. I did. I don't want to say I got COVID. I'm going to say I had possibly the flu a few weeks ago. And I just know I didn't feel good. But I also did my affirmations. I did my I am's. And I was up and running a lot sooner than I think most people. And I, I'm into natural medicine, natural herbs and things. And there's nothing like the sunshine. There's nothing like eating fresh fruits and, and vegetables in order to heal the body. So uh, I made that a reality. But yeah, um, Mr. Speaking to Existence, I know his his motto is uh, also about the things that you say really have an impact on your life. So speak things positively. And um, oh, mm. that's, that, that's what I say to people. You know, if you're talking negative, stop it. Forgive yourself. Forgive whoever got on your nerves, whatever. <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. put yourself into a place of, you know what? Possibility. Let me think positive. The positive possibilities of life. Let me get out of this because there's too many other people out here, especially right now, especially right now with uh, the way how things are globally are are operating. It's not, I know people want to say it's going to get better. Well, uh, anyway, <laughs> it can get better in your own life individually with what you do, with what you say, what you believe. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, Mr. Speaking to Existence, thank you very much, as well as to Michael. And, you know, I'm so grateful that we finally got to connect. It's It's been a long time that I've been really hoping to get you on this channel to to interview you. And I know I could interview you for, I mean, I have questions that could go for hours and hours, but we, <laughs> we do have limited time. So I'll just try to get to the most important ones. But I know after the interview, there'll be fans that say, oh, well, you did not screw this and that, but there's so many questions. <laughs> um, well, this is something that's very pertinent that the, that someone has asked you besides. Well, you know, a lot, there are a lot of people that are watching this that, of course, really want to win the lottery. So what would you tell someone that is really hoping to win the lottery? Well, don't just say, I want to win the lottery. Say, I want to win the jackpot. Okay. The more specific you are in life with whatever it is you say you want, you give it that much more power in order to manifest in your life. So if a person wants to manifest a large sum of money, that's another thing I say. It may not come to the lottery. You know, you never know who you know or who knows you. Like, for instance, um, uh, Jim Carrey. I've been hearing that lately, how he wrote a check for $100 million mm. and, you know, payable to himself. And he kept it in his wallet. And one day he was paid $100 million for the movie Dumb and Dumber. And he made that his reality. He wrote it down. He wrote it on a check, which made that more of a reality because a check is obviously an instrument of exchange for money. And then he uh, did the work by visualizing it and he made it happen in his life. I think that's the same for a number of people. I, yeah, a number of people. Oh, yeah. Was that, I, I just looked, I think that was 10, was it 10 million that he did that for? Was it 10 or 100? I thought it was 100 million. Or he wrote a check. I believe he wrote a check for 100. No, oh, you could. You may be right. I just, for some reason, I had in my head 10 and I just looked it up and it said 10, but you never know. There's a lot of fake news out there. So <laughs> I just wanted to. <laughs> yeah, there it is. But I think the point that people are trying to make about yeah. that 
because I've heard people say that they thought that I had won it within four months of uh, saying it. And I'm like, no, that was mm. 2004 that I said it, mm. but it manifested in 2007. And for me or for anyone else, I can't say, because I've had people ask, well, how long will it take? I don't know, because I don't know your mind. Mm. You know, I, I, it's all an individual experience. So if you have strong faith in life, then obviously whatever you put out and you say about yourself will occur at the time it's supposed to for that person. Mm. It's like it did for me. Like, I can't say, well, it will take three years or it'll take two months. I don't know that because I don't know how strong a person's faith is and how much work they need to do on themselves. But it does require working. It requires putting that into the mind and doing the work of seeing it, doing the work of living it, doing the work of, if you want to move to a neighborhood, go and look it around, you know, imagine the imagination. So huge. One of my favorite movies growing up was Peter Pan. <laughs> and I guess my cousin, my middle name is Pandora. So <laughs> to see that, and that whole movie was about basically, I, I, it was a law of attraction movie. You know, it's one of those movies where he kept saying, believe, believe, believe. And the moment that they believed, they started rising up and flying, you know? So it's about believing. It really is. It's really, you know, there's all and how strong a person believes in themselves and they, and they can make anything happen. Anybody can. Mm. Anybody. From a little child to the oldest person living, just have to do the work and believe. Yeah, Cynthia, thank you very much. I know we're running kind of short on time here. Is is there anything else you wanted to say today that I don't know enough to ask or that you just wanted to say today? Well, I want to say that I know there's a number of people that want to win. They have to get out of this mindset of uh, competition in a sense. They have to put themselves into the mindset that there's more than enough. Because there is. And another thing that I, you know, I don't talk about the lottery too, too much because that's, you know, I've done that, but I do, you know, for those who want to ask me questions, I say, well, you know what, there's typically a lottery every single day, <laughs> you know, be specific in regards to what it is you want. If you want to be in a hundred billion or billion, write it down. And once you do that, you know, you do the work in order to do the work. You have to believe it. You have to see it. You got to feel it. You got to, you know, just keep trusting, trusting. And if it's something dealing with your health, you got to believe it. You have to see it. You got to feel it. So even with that, it's like an athlete pushing through something or a bodybuilder or whatever. They push through in order to get to the end result. And that's all that people know. Focus on the end result. When you can focus on the end result, then that's what the possibility is. I focus on the end result. My end result was holding that lottery checkup. My end result was doing the work, as I stated before, by looking into financial advisors, looking into attorneys, interviewing these people, actually. I did the interviewing before I went through and uh, hired these people. So Before you won? Yeah. Hmm. Wow. How did people react before you had won when you um, told them that, look, I, this is going to happen? I didn't tell them this was going to happen. Oh. <laughs> I just was asking questions. <laughs> you know, a number of attorneys and in, uh, in professional people will give you, you know, free consultation. So I took advantage of that and to get to know some people and just did my research. I was doing the work, doing a lot of research, breathing it into my soul, you know. And so in order to make this a reality or a relationship a reality, I remember once having somebody ask me about a celebrity, like they were so in love with a celebrity. I said, do you know how many people are in love with celebrities? Why do you love the celebrity? <laughs> you know, think about the whys. Not necessarily the hows, but why. <laughs> and um, I believe that person eventually did get uh, married to, they didn't marry that celebrity, they married someone else because they had to stop and really think about it. Uh, I think it's uh, great to have those childlike ambitions. <laughs> But also to look and really think about it in terms of relationship. Is it love that you're seeking? 
because they they're receiving love. So you want that. Well, put it out there that you want to be in a loving relationship and the qualities you want from that person. Seek that and you'll have a better chance of that manifesting. And so that's something too that I'm going to be going into uh, coaching and helping people to hone in on what it is that they want and then give them the guidance that they need in order to help make that manifest in their life. And yeah, just keep it in mind that, as you said, most people are wanting the lottery. I think what they want is what is not necessarily the lottery. What they want is what it can do for them. Having more money, especially in this day and age, at this time period that we are in, they want to be able to have the stability and security that money brings. So I would tell them they need to study money, study what money is about, because it's not just about money. It's about resources, being able to have more resources. It's about investing in possibly digital currencies, gold, silver. Like I did that type of work, still do, do that kind of work and find out what money can do for you. That's like, that's just like what I was saying, money should be working for you, not you work with money. And when a person can get that in their brain, they can put themselves into the higher level of money because they're seeing money differently. They're creating a relationship with the money because you have to also. When you can be in that relationship with yourself, like I'm okay with my I am's, I'm okay with my belief and how I believe in regards to people, places, and things. Well, money is a thing. So you make a good relationship with money. And I don't mean worshiping money because in my belief, we don't worship money, but you do create this relationship of, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with having large sums of money. I'm okay because I can do more with this. You are creating a different vibration around you. You are creating an, an atmosphere of belief, a positive atmosphere of this can happen. That's what you're feeding into your mind when you do that. Wow. So it's very, very intriguing. Do you still play the lottery yourself? Once in a while, not not very often, but once in a while, if if something happens that inspires me or, you know, certainly for myself, I had a dream years ago. I've had many dreams about things before they've happened. And so if I were to have a dream, I would certainly play. But if something happens that could be a synchronicity or something that inspires me to play, then I'll play. But I don't very often. But how about you? I've slowed down. I, I've slowed down. I... I have people around me that I think still can play, but I actually, I'm doing more spiritual work, writing my book. You know, it's, it only takes a couple dollars, I know, to go and do that. But I I really am focused on other things and I'm happy to, you know, help people learn about the power of the mind based on what I have seen, what it has done for me and what I know it can do for other people. So, yeah, <laughs> I was just going to suggest just, you know, when you won what you had to won, this is just a question. Yeah. Um, did you see yourself winning that particular amount or just that you were going to win the lottery? For myself, it was just that I was going to win the lottery. I just had this really, I was feeling down on my luck one day and then had this dream that I essentially had this dream that was very vivid, but it had already happened. And it wasn't like I saw it happening. It just had already happened. So after that, from that point on, I just believed that it was going to happen because the dream was so real. And I ha had had other dreams that were similar, not about the lottery, about other subjects, other things that have happened in my life. So that's why I felt that this would happen. And so I didn't see an amount or, or numbers or anything, but I find it very interesting because I, that was my experience, but I've met other people that have had really interesting experiences as well, where they've one thing or another led them to believe that it was going to happen. But you're the first person I've ever met that visualized that specific amount. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's extraordinary. Thank you. So, well, thank you, Sharon. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think what I've noticed that you have uh, used, the words that you used was they believe, they believe. That's what I say. We, what you believe will manifest. If you believe that people are uh, like money, you have this great relationship with money and that 
you're going to have large sums of money, it'll find its way to you. It'll find its way. You know, so, yeah, what we believe will manifest. Definitely. Real quick question. I interviewed this lottery winner that he rarely played, and then he won the lottery, and he donated his entire prize to help feed the homeless because he believes so strongly that what we give, we receive. That's true. And I've, I've seen a quote from you that you believe similarly. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Definitely. Well, this is from the Bible. As you give, so shall you receive. And that giving is greater than receiving is, is uh, what Jesus taught. And I believe that because when I, I've given away large sums to a number of charities or just people, and it gives you, it, it, it's the same as like Dennis Dennis, that feeling that you get when this, you just get this feel good energy about you when you're giving. And it also feeds soul. It, it helps you to be in this place of, as I give out, I know it'll come back. It may not come back in a form of money, but it will come back form of resources. It's an interchange of what goes out will come back to you in other ways or it'll come back to you the same way. But it's having to believe. And like that that gentleman who did that, I'm sure it, he's been blessed a thousandfold for being so generous to be able to just not look at it as, you know, he's probably said to himself, I'm okay with whatever, but let me help these people. And he helped raise the vibration on earth by doing that. He helped raise the vibration of so many people to believing. So his gift was huge by doing that. God bless. Yeah. 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 No, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. And what you've done with, we didn't discuss too much of it in this interview, but you've done so no, many things for, chari- for charities. And I know, I know you have in, in other countries as well. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I, um, I was at the, uh, Geffen cause I'm on the board uh, of the Geffen Playhouse. And there was a play at the time called Ruined. And it was about women in Congo going through these traumatic, horrific experiences of being um, raped and things. And so the play was about that. And Jennifer Gardner was in uh, the audience and she made it a point to meet me. She wanted to meet me. And she said that uh, her husband at the time, which was Ben Affleck, wanted to do um, so, well, she said she wanted to talk to me. And I said, okay, sure. So I set up a meeting and we met and I, and he asked me about, you know, would I be interested in joining this group to, uh, for the charitable works they were doing? I said, sure. And so I went, to uh, Cindy McCain, who else? It was a few people. It was a small caravan of people, but it was quite interesting. Um, and very eye opening. To, you know, it's I we need to see how other people live in different countries, you know, and I'm always saying I'm blessed. Always I'm blessed because the more that I have or the less that I have, there's always someone else out there who has less or who have more. But it's to me, it's all about how you treat people. And it was such a great trip because I have met so many great people and so many appreciative people that were appreciative of the, the work that we were doing. Uh, George Lopez, he has his kidney foundation and I, I was on his board. After I had gotten sick, I had to like, just kind of let some things go. Um, but, um, he does an event on, uh, around the 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo, and he has a golf tournament and typically I donate gifts so that they can be part of the auction that he hosts for his uh, charitable event. Yeah, I, uh, I've done a number of, of just, I've gone to South Africa a few times. So yeah, just, I, I have been, and I'm getting ready to do, start that again this year and getting out there. And I mean, I'm always doing something, so. It's just part of who I am. And I was like that. I was like that before I came into large sum of money. I would see someone on the street and I felt like they needed it. I'd give it. Even if I didn't have much, I still gave because 
there's more happiness in giving than in sleeping. So I, I've seen that. I really have. That's, that's extraordinary. So it seems like the lottery has, you have not changed as a person that it's, no. would you say that it's magnified your personality or made you a more, a bigger version of yourself or more powerful or well, would you say that it's, that it's done that? Cause people do argue that about lottery winners. What's your opinion on that? I'm the same today, yesterday, <laughs> forever. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm the same person I was before. And I, I'm a believer that money should never make you feel like you're better than or anything because money can come and go, you, you know, if anything, I appreciate having health. And that's the most important thing to me in life is my spiritual health and my physical health. Uh, having uh, money, it obviously can afford you better medical care and things are foods that you can, you know, purchase, but money should never, ever be this vehicle where it makes you feel like you're better than someone else because it doesn't, it doesn't. I've met some very wealthy people. They are very unhappy. <laughs> so definitely not about money. It's about who you are as a person and how you view life. It definitely is. That's really interesting. It's, it's a huge debate whether money creates happiness. You're saying that money can be very positive, but it's not necessarily the end all of happiness. Is that correct? No, not at all. Not at all. Money is just a tool. Happiness, you have to choose it. it, it actually, there's, it's part of the spirits. You know, um, as you can see, I, I'm a spiritual person. So after love, you know, in the Bible, this mentions that there's love. And then the second spirit out there is joy. So joy is, you know, you can either choose to joy or you can choose to be on the opposite, which is a negative person, always complaining. That's a spirit too. I would rather be in the good spirit so I can keep manifesting good things in life than to be on that other side, the opposite, like love, hate, joy, sadness. Who wants to be sad? And that it, it totally affects your health. It, it, I mean, there are so, so many people in the grave earlier than they should have been because they were too busy being a complainer in life and being negative in life. And they sure attracted that to themselves. And many people, without even recognizing the power of that word and what they spoke, created that reality to them. Even right now, for people who are still living, for those who speak negatively, and they're the ones who always say, why this is not working? Why that is not working? Because you keep saying that is what's grateful. Like, what do you believe? I believe it's not going to work. Okay, then. I'm not going to argue with them, but I'll make them think, oh, what you believe? Because what you believe is what you're creating. So, Yeah, that's that's all very fascinating. And you might get into actually coaching. Yes. Stuff then. Where are people going to be able to find that? on my Twitter and on my Instagram, and I am creating a new website. I had a site and, you know, after I got sick, I just didn't have the time to manage it, but I'll post that on my Twitter and my Instagram account. Okay. And we will, so we'll put a link to, to your okay. social media below in the description of this video okay, and of this podcast, and also a link to your book. Okay. As of the recording of this interview, it's not quite out, but it could be, but it will be out at some point. We will put a link to that. I'm sure a lot of people will be very interested in that. And is there anything else that you wanted to say today about your book or, or about manifestation, the lottery, anything? Well, I think that what people will take away from the book is the ability to think and to use their imagination. The imagination is so powerful. When we think with faith, we are creating a reality where things are possible. When we think in fear, we're creating a possibility. <laughs> and you notice it's the same thing. So my my goal is to have people to build their faith in terms of a brighter future and to have hope. And, you know, to answer some questions. And I tend to know how to hone in on that. And so what they'll get is the tools to create and to use their mind and to definitely visualize, use a vision board 
Use the vision board in your mind. Use the vision board on paper. To make it a point to learn how to write the, down your goals. Read those goals daily. So it's, it's, it's going to be an informative educational book to help, whether it's money, love, health, whatever it is. The same principles can, can apply to all of those aspects of your life. Well, it sounds very, very positive. Well, I'll definitely check that out once it, once it comes you. out. Well, Cynthia, thank you so much for your time. I really, you're really welcome. appreciate it. I know you're very busy. I'd love to have you back another time in the future, but we really, really appreciate your insights here. It's fascinating. It's very positive. You're an inspiration. So thank you thank so much. You. You're welcome. Thanks for, you, for having me. So I appreciate that too. So that was my interview with Cynthia Stafford. If you like this interview, go ahead and hit the like button and let me know in the comments, what did you think of this interview? And what would you do if you won $112 million from the lottery? I love checking out your comments. If you want early access to new interviews and you want to help support this podcast, I will put a link to the Patreon page below. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Thank you.